By the 1960s, Hubble's inaccurate estimate for the age of the universe had been corrected to reflect more accurate data. Resolving one challenge to the Big Bang theory. Still, it seemed the battle between the steady state and the Big Bang would end in a draw. But then, all of a sudden, scientists found a smoking gun. One nearly as old as the universe itself. Its discovery doomed one of these theories to the dustbin of history. For 500 years, science has been on a quest to discover where we belong. Now, astronomers struggle to solve the riddle of how it all began. Little did they know, the cosmos was whispering an answer back. We just couldn't hear it. That whisper took the form of leftover heat generated when the universe exploded into being. The radiation that George Lemaitre predicted was out there, but that he had no tools to hear. By 1965, scientists had those tools. The residue, the echo, the aftershocks of the Big Bang should be measurable today. But it took about two decades before our instruments became powerful enough to clinch George Gamow and his students' theory of this background radiation. The story of this radiation is like the Keystone Cops. First, we had George Gamow and his student. They had the theory, they had the numbers, but they didn't have the experimental apparatus. Then we had the group at Princeton. Well, they knew the work of George Gamma, but they had a very primitive instrument, not sensitive enough. The group at Princeton included physicist Robert Dickey and some colleagues who supported Lemaitre's theory and wanted to look for some solid proof. My teacher, Bob Dickey, he had the idea of looking for this radiation that would be left over from a hot big bang. He had two bright young people working with him, Dave Wilkinson and Peter Rohl, he persuaded them to build a Dickey radiometer to look for this radiation. It was a shot in the dark. So his two young colleagues built one, pointed it into the air, and started looking when news of their experiment reached Bob Wilson and Arno Penzias. Penzias and Wilson were two scientists working not on the Big Bang Theory, but on satellite communications for Bell Labs in Holmdale, New Jersey. They were using Bell's huge radio telescope, only they couldn't get a clean reading. Instead, they got static noise. The nature of this stuff is that it's random noise. And that noise is very much like what you would hear if you tune a TV set or an FM receiver to an unused channel. Um, we didn't see what we expected. The antenna was actually getting more radiation than it should have. Our clear response to that was, there must be something wrong here, that we're getting all this extra noise. What was this strange noise? And where was it coming from? Errant interference from nearby New York City? Airplane signals? Pigeon droppings inside the horn of the telescope? We didn't doubt physics. Whatever it was had to be coming from somewhere. But we were really running out of ideas of where it might be. In fact, this mysterious radiation was coming from everywhere every direction and every corner of space. To Penzias and Wilson, that was just crazy. But Penzias and Wilson had unknowingly found what Dickey and his colleagues were seeking. What Gamow, Alpha, and Lemaitre had predicted. They'd found the smoking gun 
that proved the universe wasn't eternal. The source was the uh, creation of the universe, the Big Bang. Penzias and Wilson and the Princeton team published their findings in separate papers in Astrophysical Journal in 1965. Their research crushed Hoyle's steady-state theory overnight. Finally, the Big Bang fit into the puzzle of the universe. Our modern theory of the Big Bang is a remarkable achievement in that it allows us to